Hey guys, so this is going to be a tutorial on how to create a Minecraft map from any terrain on the planet. Um, there have been a lot of kind of popular stuff recently with the uh, with the whole Minecraft Earth, not the Pokemon Go game, but the uh, you know the actual map. And I wanted to show you guys that we can actually do this with really anywhere on the Earth, not just the entire globe. Um, but if you wanted to do like a specific landmass, or maybe your hometown, or maybe an island, you can actually do that with anything, and you don't have to do the whole world. And you can do it in a lot greater detail. Uh, so the way that we're going to do this is we're going to use a G GIS program called uh, MicroDEM. Uh, so you're going to need that. It's a free software. Uh, you're also going to need World Painter. A lot of you are already going to be familiar with that. Uh, it's also free. Minecraft is actually the only thing that costs money on here. Uh, and then Paint Shop Pro, which you can get a free trial of for 30 days. Uh, I guess it will cost money if you've already used up that trial. Um, but it's really not like a strings attached type trial. It didn't ask me for any credit card information or anything like that. Uh, below are also going to be some links to some stuff that, that you might one, want to use. Um, the PNG converter is if you really can't get Paint Shop Pro. Um, the only problem with this is that you won't really be able to um, edit the photo so it won't really work if you're trying to do anything with a body of water in it uh, and, and you guys will see why in a little bit so the first thing we need to do is we need to actually get the data that we're gonna turn into our Minecraft map um, so the way that we're gonna do this is we're actually gonna use this site right here the SRTM tile grabber uh, and basically what this is is just uh, somebody made a very easy way for us to download um, these topographical tiles for elevation data and uh, we're going to just go here and as you can see there's tons of little squares um, they're only squares for where there is land uh, it's also missing a good chunk of the north pole basically um, so you won't be able to get anything from alaska or scandinavia greenland a lot of siberia uh, as well as the entirety of antarctica but there is an alternative that i'll show you guys in a second here um, so for this example what i'm going to do is i'm going to download two different um, tiles because I do want to show you guys how to combine them and everything um, but we're just going to do kind of the San Francisco Bay area and then kind of just the the coast of California right here so we're going to go ahead and click this and we're going to click download geotiff and it'll turn green to show us that we've already downloaded it and those are going to be our two uh, data sets right there and they're downloading and while they're downloading I want to show you guys this other way to get this data this is a U.S. Geological Survey program um, that is combined with NASA because they're both government organizations and so they share data. And because they're gov government organizations, uh, all the data is actually public domain. So we can actually um, request a product, which is going to be whatever data we need from here. Um, and obviously if you work in GIS, this is very useful because it doesn't just give you ele elevation maps, but it can give you a ton of stuff. Uh, so the way that you do it is, um, let's say we want to make a Minecraft map of the Great Lakes region. We will just select that whole region, and we will go down here and, and type in elevation. Now there's a bunch of stuff that comes up. Um, I would recommend downloading th or requesting this one. Um, do not, well, I guess if you're doing Great Lakes, this one might be a good one to get. This one is going to be bathymetric data, um, so it's not going to be exactly what you need. It's going to be um, it's going to be the actually underwater topography, um, so it might not be useful. And then these two are going to be a different type of data set. Um, this one is going to be more higher quality, um, so you're going to be able to if you wanted to like really zoom in on like your hometown or like your neighborhood, then this would probably be the one to get. Um, you can actually select more multiple of these. Okay, gotta add it manually um, so if you want if you're not exactly sure which one you want you can select multiple um, make sure that when you're drawing this this uh, you know area make sure that you don't use the polygon tool because if you're if you're making a minecraft map you're eventually gonna have to turn it into a square anyways um, so the polygon is just gonna make things more complicated um, and then you're gonna come down here you're gonna select geotiff and just go for native projection. Uh, it's If you select a different projection, then it's actually going to distort it a little bit, um, which you know might be fine. But if you don't want to mess with it, just go for native projection. 
I'm not going to submit it because what's going to happen after you submit is uh, after you to get onto the site in general, you do have to actually log in and give them give them some information. Um, but after you submit it, it's going to send you an email and it's going to have a little banner at the top saying, hey, your request is processing um, and here's where you can monitor it. Uh, it will take some time for them to process the request. Um, it really depends on the type of data that you're requesting. So if I were to request all four of those elevation maps, uh, it would take a lot longer. Since this is a gigantic area that I'm requesting, it's going to take a lot longer. If you were to request like just a small town, it's not going to take that long. So for example, I requested one map of Colorado and it took about 10 hours for it to get to me. Um, and then I requested another one of the Denver metro area and it took about 10 minutes. Um, the, the Colorado one, the whole one of Colorado was of all four of those projections because I, or all, of all four of those data sets because I didn't know which one to get yet. Uh, the Denver one was just of two data sets. So it took a lot less time for them to get me those two data sets on a very small area and it took a lot longer time for them to get me four data sets, one of them very high resolution. Um, and of Colorado. So that's how we're going to get this data. But for now, we're going to use this data that we got from this, this site right here. Uh, and we've actually got those downloaded. And when we open these up, what we're going to want to do is find the one that is a TIF file. And go ahead and take those out. There's that first one. You can see that San Francisco Bay right there. And there is that second one. I'm gonna go ahead and close out of that. Then we're gonna go ahead and go to our local disk and go to map data and DEMs. And we're gonna go ahead and put this right in here. I'm going to delete these ones just for simplicity's sake. Next we're going to go ahead and open up that micro DEM. And we're going to go to file, open, open and merge DEM slash grids. Go ahead and navigate to the folder we were just at. And shift click on both of them or all of them. And what it's going to do is it's actually going to merge these and it requires no more user input um, because each of these each of these files actually has data on it of where how they go together and where they're located in the world. So this program actually knows where to put these uh, and you don't have to do any like putting the puzzle together which I know can seem daunting if you're doing like you know seven or eight of those tiles. Don't have to worry about any of it. This program will do it for you. So we can see it has combined both of them. We've got the San Francisco Bay Area right here. We've got the northern co coast of California right up here. So now what we're going to do, uh, first thing you want to do actually, um, if, if this is your first time launching or opening a map, you're going to go to Legends and Marginalia, and you're going to actually uncheck all these. And that's going to be global settings, so you're not going to ever have to change that again. Um, as you see, because it, I didn't have to change it when I opened it. Um, but those are actually part of the image, so if you render it like that, then those legends will be on the image, which we don't want because we want a pure height map. So make sure that those are all turned off. You're not going to need them, I promise. Now, the next thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to thin this down a little bit. Um, this is too raw of data for us right now. So we're going to go to Raster GIS, Thins, Disseminate, and we're going to select a thin factor I'm going to go for two. Uh, anywhere between one and three is probably going to be fine for your purposes. And we're going to click OK. That's going to go ahead and thin that. And there we are. So now that, we, now that we've thinned this, what we can actually do is we can go to, we can right click on it and go to display parameter and elevation. And now what we can do is we can change the way that this is scaled and we can change it to grayscale. Look at that. We need to go to Z range though, and we need to make sure that all of these are gonna be set to the right thing. So what we need to do now is we need to figure out what the maximum and the minimum Z is gonna be. Uh, the way that we can do this is as I'm moving my mouse around here, you can see that the Z is changing down at the bottom. 
we need to go to the darkest and the brightest areas and see what abouts is the is the maximum elevation so i think this is probably the maximum elevation right here and it looks like it's going to about oh, 36 3700 i'm going to mouse over these areas just to make sure that it doesn't go higher than that and it looks like that's probably our maximum height now in these dark valleys want to make sure that it doesn't I think it probably does go into the negatives because that was the default um, elevation that I put for the minimum yeah see it's going into the negatives there so we're gonna repeat this process but now what we can do is we can put an accurate uh, guess of what the uh, elevation is actually gonna be uh, so we're gonna put the minimum we're gonna keep the minimum at negative 5 because that seems to be correct uh, but right here, I'm going to put it to 4,000 because it seems like that's probably going to be a safe uh, bet. And you're going to see that it kind of dulls it down a little bit. Uh, that just means that the you know it actually is going to be fairly accurate. And it's not going to cut off the tops of these mountains. Just again, I'm going to make sure that this mountain isn't going to be cut off. And it looks like it doesn't go above 4,000, so I don't think there should be any problem. All right. All right, so one thing that we have to do before we actually render this is we need to make sure that it's at the scale that we want. One thing that's weird about this program is it's gonna render it at whatever scale it is on your screen right now. So if, it, if I were to render it right now, the size that it is on my screen would be the exact size that it outputs. So when you zoom in, it's actually gonna output it bigger. So I'm gonna go to 100%. It's gonna go ahead and render that. And now it's gonna render at this resolution, which is vastly different. So now we can go to File, Save Map as Image, and As GeoTIFF, Screen Scale, Grayscale. And I'm gonna name it San Francisco, and save it to the desktop. So now we have this, but it's currently unusable because World Painter is not going to be able to open this. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to open PaintShop Pro and turn it into a PNG. And we're also going to have to make some small modifications. When you first get into this, you're going to have to go to open and we're going to open San Francisco. But when you first get into this, something weird is going to happen where you're actually going to be in this kind of iPhone looking app type thing where it's just it just looks like a you know like a uh, cheap Photoshop knockoff uh, you're actually gonna have to go to file and where is it workspace and go to complete uh, you're gonna be on this photography mode uh, go ahead and select this complete because it's gonna give you a lot more options of what to do now the next thing we're gonna have to do is if you'll notice the ocean is actually white and on this grayscale the white is the maximum so when you render this into world painter it's actually going to assume that that ocean is at world height which isn't going to be good so we're going to have to change all this ocean to black now when you get the free trial of this you actually don't have access to the color changer which is uh which is pretty annoying but there's a workaround that i've found and this is what caused me a lot of headache trying to figure this out um, but there is a workout work around we're gonna go ahead and go to selections and select all I'm gonna go to selections and modify and select color range now what we're gonna do is we're going to select this white and we're going to subtract this color range from the selection so it's gonna subtract all the stuff that is pure white like it is right here there it is. Then go to selections, invert. And now the only thing that is selected is pure white, which is awesome. This is gonna be a real problem. Um, you really are gonna have to do this. Most of the time you might be able to just use the paint bucket and fill. 
but the project that I was using that I was doing earlier was um, kind of the Washington uh, the Washington State region and that region has a lot of lot a lot of rivers and it's it's just got a very intricate water system and some of it is cut off and so you, the paint bucket won't actually reach it and so it would take literally hours to go in and fill every single pixel because there are just individual pixels that you would have to go in and fill. The important thing to realize though is when you do this it's going to also select wherever the highest point in the map is. So you'll notice that it also selected this mountain. Um, just be careful not to color that in when we're doing this. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to paintbrush and go ahead and change it to 100% hardness. Um, we don't need it being dulled at all because that's going to create a different color. Uh, make sure that the color is set to pure black. So zero, 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 not anything less than that. And that the, the brush is, it's going to be easiest if the brush is gigantic. And we're just going to go ahead and paint all this in. There we go. And we're going to go to file, save as San Francisco PNG. And we're going to go ahead and save that. Now we can X out of this and we can close out of this. Next thing we need to do is we need to op open up World Painter. And we are actually ready to import New World from Height Map. Go ahead and select that San Francisco. And make sure that it's on 1.14 if that's what you want to do. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to decide what scale we want it at. Now I'm going to keep it at around 50% because I don't need it being a gigantic uh, size for this example. But you can put it at 100% if you want like more of a gigantic area, whatever you want. And actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm going to put it at 100% because I'm going to cut out everything but the Bay Area. Now for the for the water level, what we're going to do is we're going to keep it at 62 for this, but we're going to make the bottom for this 61. That's going to make the water level 1. The other thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to mute the mountains a little bit by decreasing this. And this is going to take some trial and error. And you'll probably have to render, you'll probably have to import this height map several times before you get something that you like. But I'm going to keep it at 200 just because I'm at a 100% scaling. And we'll see what this looks like. If we did this right, then there should be true ocean lines, but also that valley is going to be filled with water. So let's see what happened. This looks mostly the same. So I'm not going to worry about it. But that is something that you're probably going to want to do is just to make sure that everything kind of matches up with what you thought it was going to look like. And there's that mountain right there. Looking good. And there's that ocean. Now there's a lot of things that we can do to this map. And I'm actually going to separate that into a separate tutorial. Uh, because it's going to be more world painter oriented. Um, and this is just a tutorial on how to figure out how to put that height map into a Minecraft world. So for now you're done, um, but I'll watch out for a second tutorial that I'll be uploading in just a few minutes where I will show you guys how to make this look true to, your, to the earth a little bit. And that one will be a little bit more of like a, hey, here's how you do this and here's a time lapse. Anyways, I appreciate you guys tuning in to listen to this. I hope you guys found this useful. Um, if you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll try to answer them. I know that this can be finicky stuff and it really took me about six hours of experimentation uh, just to figure all this stuff out. And I am experienced in the GIS field. So the, this this can be hard to figure out and it's kind of a, it's kind of a headache to figure out. But thank you guys for tuning in and I'll see you guys next time.